Shut up, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Kate Olaf, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you how you can start investing in index funds. Now, before I go into what an index fund is, I just want to put it out there that this strategy of investing is supposed to make you rich over a long period of time. So if you are watching this video and trying to figure out a strategy to get rich quick, let me be the person to tell you that this is not it. <laughs> investing in these funds is something that can take years to build. So the sooner you start, the better you're off. All right, so now that you understand that, let's get into the definition of an index fund. So an index fund is a fund designed to follow certain preset rules so that the fund can track a specified basket of underlying investments. To better explain, let me paint you a picture using the common basket of eggs scenario. Say I had a basket of 10 eggs and I let you buy one egg from the basket, so you now own 10% of the basket, but you own 100% of that single egg. Well, what happens to your investment when that one egg breaks? You still own it, but you own a cracked egg, so your overall worth depreciates. That's what it's like when you buy stocks of a company. If that company does really well, then your stocks within that company will do really well. If that company does bad, then your stocks will depreciate. But what if instead of buying one whole egg, you bought 10% of every one of my eggs within the basket? So now you don't just own one egg, but you own a little portion of every egg. Now, when one egg breaks, only 10% of your overall worth will be affected. And this is what it's like to invest in index funds. But instead of eggs, you're just buying portions of stock in really big companies. Index funds are designed to give you, as an investor, a broad exposure to the market by not only investing in one company, but by investing in hundreds of companies. In one of my previous videos, I made the mistake of referencing the S&P 500 index fund as a mutual fund. And the reason that it's not a mutual fund is because mutual funds invest in a changing list of securities managed by an investment manager, while index funds invest in a specific list of securities. Basically, if you were to invest in a mutual fund, you're allowing a brokerage manager hired by the brokerage you choose to basically change the companies that you're investing in within the fund. These are created in hopes that the fund managers can give you as an investor a greater rate of return than the overall market. But according to a study done by Vanguard, they found that only 18% of active mutual fund managers beat the market over a 15 year period. Remember that we are talking about a great investment for you over a long period of time. So that's not to say that a mutual fund want to give you a greater rate of return than an index fund over a one year period. But overall, long term, you're better off investing in index funds. So allow me to explain to you a couple reasons as to why you should use index funds before I show you how to invest in them. First, they have lower fees than a mutual fund would. According to thebalance.com, in 2020, index funds had an average expense ratio of 0.06% while actively managed mutual funds had an average expense ratio of 0.71%. Now, you may be thinking, well, okay, 0.71% is not even a lot of money, so who even cares? Well, the reality is that 0.71% really isn't a large percentage, but when you start talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, you might have to bite your tongue. And once your portfolio starts growing massively, you're going to realize that these small little management fees that these brokerages charge are really going to affect your money. When you start buying into these index funds, make sure to check out the different brokerages out there and their fees within them to see how you can maximize your overall return. Secondly, because of the first reason, you're going to end up making more money. By saving on fees and consistently putting money into these funds, you will find that you will maximize your overall return. By starting off with just a little bit of money, you will grow your portfolio into massive amounts of dough, if you do it consistently. Thirdly, 
Index funds are a great tool for diversification. If you don't already know, when it comes to investing your money, diversification is everything. It's the act of investing in a variety of different areas, financial instruments, and industries. For example, one of the biggest index funds is the S&P 500 index, which tracks some of the biggest companies in the world, including Microsoft, Amazon, and Apple. So this is where we see our egg basket example come into play. Instead of just buying one stock in Apple, I'm going to purchase an index fund, which I'm still buying a small portion of Apple along with 400 other companies. Diversification is the key to investing because at the end of the day, it really is what keeps you safe. And lastly, it is very easy to invest in index funds. The problem that I see today with a lot of young people is that they try to invest in the stock market with a lot of emotion. They like a certain company or a certain CEO, and they really just feel that it's gonna do really well, and so they invest their money into it. And that is a poor way to invest because they are not diversifying their money. It's kind of like they're gambling and they're just betting all their money on one company and not looking at data and making a smart decision. To try and research and figure out if a company is going to be a good investment, it's too much work. Why not just invest in index funds? Instead of waiting for a stock price to drop down within a company to go all in and buy, why not just be able to purchase index funds anytime with no hassle? The reality is that the stock market is a confusing thing and I'm not going to sit here and act like it isn't. I mean, shoot, while filming this video, I realized that I had to call my financial pastor and rediscuss my entire portfolio. There's a lot that goes into it, and let's be honest, a lot of us don't have the time to sit in front of a computer, look at a bunch of graphs, and try to figure out if a stock is worth buying or not. So by utilizing index funds, you can guarantee that your money will be growing over a long period of time, and it's going to be easy to do. So now that you understand what an index fund is and its benefits, how do you go about buying them? I'm going to simplify this process by breaking it down into four steps. The first step is to choose and open a brokerage account. When investing in the stock market, you have to choose a brokerage in which you're going to put your money into. This can be anything from TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, or Fidelity. I personally don't think it really matters who you choose. As long as you feel comfortable with it, you've done your research, and you start investing. All you have to do to open a brokerage account is choose a brokerage and go to their website. They will usually have a button in the top right corner that says open an account. Just click on that and once you do, you have started the process. The second step is to link your bank account with your brokerage account. This step will usually automatically happen once you hit the open account button on their website. The brokerage needs access to your bank account. That way you can transfer money into your brokerage account and you can start purchasing stock. And know that you as the owner of the brokerage account will be the only one who has access to transfer money within your bank account. Brokerages aren't going to be allowed to go into your account and start moving money around without your permission. However, I do believe there are certain automations that you can set up within your account to automatically transfer money when you please. I would assume it all depends on the brokerage that you use, so just make sure to do your own research. The third step is to pick your index funds and start buying. So once your account is set up and you have moved some money from your bank account into your brokerage account, you can now start buying. Every website should have a search bar somewhere at the top of the page. You're simply going to go to the search bar and type the words index funds. Chances are a lot of options are going to pop up, but don't worry because you are going to be looking for something very specific. These brokerages are massive businesses and they track a lot of data data that you have access to when you open an account with them. And the key tracking that you want to look for when you're looking at all these index funds is their 10 year return. So when you're scrolling through the index funds, chances are you're going to see a three year return, a five year return, a 10 year return, and then a lifetime return. So make sure that you only pay attention to the 10 year return. Don't worry about the one, three, or five. And all you wanna do is scroll through all the index funds that they offer and pick three to five index funds that give you the best 10 year return. For instance, say you're looking through all these funds 
and you're noticing that a lot of them over the 10 year period have about an average of 9%. Well, if you keep looking and find a fund that has a 10 year return of 13%, make sure to write that down. Basically, you're just shopping all these funds for the highest 10 year return. And you may be asking, well, why do we just shop for the 10 year return and not the one, three, or five? And the reason that we are shopping for the 10 year return is because we are not trying to get rich quick. Investing in these index funds is something that you should consider doing for the rest of your life. It's a process that starts out very slow, but the longer you do it, the more money you make. So we focus primarily on the 10 year return because we want to make sure that the product we're investing in is a safe bet over a long period of time. And the last step is to just keep doing this forever. You have to keep putting money into your brokerage account consistently for it to grow exponentially. The easiest way to do this is by transferring money every time you get paid. This way you can be sure that you're constantly growing your portfolio because you're sticking to a schedule. Now, the amount of money that you put into your brokerage account is completely up to you. I always preach that you want to make sure you're investing money that you can afford to lose. For instance, if you make $1,500 per paycheck, I would wouldn't recommend that you put a thousand dollars into your brokerage account every pay cycle. I mean, unless you can live off $500, then by all means. <laughs> but maybe instead you only put $300 of that paycheck. And you almost have to act as if you never even had that $300. In other words, whatever amount you choose to invest, you need to ask the question, if I never had this money in the first place, would I still be able to survive? I mean, let's be honest, if the whole stock market crashed and you lost all of your money, would you still be okay? Just consider this when trying to figure out how much money you wanna put into it consistently. And that's it, I think I pretty much covered everything. I just like to make it clear that this type of investing is for the long term. You're not gonna get rich quick off it, but you should start utilizing this method no matter how old you are. I mean, you're never going to make money from index funds if you don't start. So that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to like, comment, you know the drill. If you enjoyed the content, really, if you do enjoy the content, it takes a lot of work to do this. Let me just be honest. So if you do enjoy the content, please, please, I'm begging, hit that subscribe, like it, comment, notification bell, and what is it? Goodness. Oh yeah. If you don't follow me on my socials, you can find me at Kate Olaf everywhere. And as always, I'm Kate Olaf, and I will see you in the next one.